Earlier this year, in the process of joining the company I work at now, I interviewed for senior software engineering roles at Meta, OpenAI, Databricks, and quite a few other companies. I learned a lot throughout the process, what worked and what didn't. In this video, I'll walk you through my complete Databricks interview journey. Hi friends, I'm Maddie. I'm a senior software engineer who previously worked at Google and interned at other big tech companies like Amazon, IBM, and Microsoft. This is the third video in my interview series. After OpenAI and Meta, some of you were curious about Databricks, and I've been through the big tech interview gauntlet more times than I can count, so I've learned what actually moves the needle. Just like I did with OpenAI and Meta in my previous videos, we'll cover the interview rounds, the exact topics you need to master, compensation ranges you can expect, and most importantly, the preparation strategy that works not just for Databricks, but for any data infrastructure company like Snowflake, Confluent, or even the big cloud providers. In an upcoming video, I'll also be sharing the exact resume that got me these interview calls, so make sure that you're subscribed for that. Now, before we dive in, quick reality check. Databricks' bar is incredibly high. They're building the future of data lakehouse architecture and they need engineers who can handle distributed systems at massive scale. But here's the thing, once you understand their interview system and what they're really looking for, you can dramatically improve your odds. So let's break it down. Before we talk about the interview process, let's first chat about what Databricks is and what they do. At its core, Databricks is a data and AI platform built by the original creators of Apache Spark. The company focuses on helping organizations organizations unify data engineering, analytics, and machine learning workflows in a single environment. Their flagship concept is the lake house, which combines the reliability of data warehouses with the flexibility of data lakes, so teams can work with large-scale data without stitching together multiple disconnected systems. Databricks is used by enterprises across industries to process massive data sets, build production-grade machine learning pipelines, and manage everything from ETL to real-time analytics. For anyone interested in large-scale systems or applied AI, it would be a fascinating place to work. I personally was also interested in part because they have an office like five minutes away from where I live. All right, so first things first, getting Databricks to notice you. And I'll be completely honest, cold applying through their career page is basically playing the lottery with terrible odds. What actually worked for me was updating my LinkedIn to open to work for recruiters specifically. Yes, I know it feels really vulnerable putting yourself out there like that. And I was worried a recruiter from my previous job might see it. But honestly, that small risk was worth it. Within two weeks, I had multiple Databricks recruiters in my inbox. Now, if you know anyone in Databricks, absolutely get that referral. It moves you from from the general pile to the definitely screen this person pile. And one more thing, timing definitely matters. Databricks, like a lot of big tech companies out there, tend to do most of their hiring in Q1 and Q3. Now that we're in Q4, still apply, but know that the process might move a bit slower. Now let's talk about the interview process at a high level. The Databricks interview process is typically around six to eight weeks, though mine was compressed to about a month because I had competing offers. It starts with a 30 minute recruiter screen, pretty standard. They want to know your background, why Databricks, and they'll ask about a project that you're proud of. One tip is to pick a project with scale. Next comes the tactical phone screen. This is an hour with the software engineer who works at Databricks. You'll code live on CoderPad with runnable code. Expect problems covering the fundamental topics, typically things like arrays, strings, binary search, graph traversal or hash maps, and of course, be prepared for complexity analysis and optimization discussions. You'll then get around with the hiring manager. This is purely behavioral and the recruiter will have you talk to a manager for the role that you're specifically interviewing for. If you pass that, then you move on to the virtual onsite. This is four to five rounds, each lasting 45 to 60 minutes. You'll face two pure coding rounds focusing on the core DSNA topics like the ones I mentioned before, a coding round specifically about concurrency and multi-threading, one system design round, and finally, one cross-functional or behavioral round. Now that we cover the process, let's talk compensation. Databricks pays the following. For L3s or juniors and new grads, total comp is around 250,000. For L4s, mid-levels, usually two to four years, they pay around $415,000. And for seniors or L5s, they typically pay around $640,000. The breakdown for L5 typically looks like base salary is around 205 k equity is around 415 k and bonus is around 23 k The equity component is huge here, and with Databricks still private but IPO rumors constantly swirling, there's significant upside potential. One thing to note is that Databricks is aggressive with refreshers. Top performers can see 50 to 100% of the 
the initial grant as an annual refresh, which is way better than what I saw personally at Google. Now let's break down each round and the topics they focus on. For the technical screen and the on-site DSNA coding rounds, these are your standard data structures and algorithms technical interview covering typical LeetCode style questions. I found these to be LeetCode medium to hard. Some of the most common topics you can find in these rounds would be the ones I discussed previously, so graphs, binary search, hash maps, and array manipulations. Databricks uses CoderPad, so familiarize yourself with that IDE environment. When going through these rounds, keep the following in mind. Make sure to ask clarifying questions before diving into any solutions so that you're able to clearly understand the requirements and not miss any test cases or edge cases. Work with the engineer throughout your thought process so they can understand the way that you approach the problem. Keep in mind, your interviewer is looking for clean, concise, and complete code that is well-structured and bug-free, hopefully. Seek to identify constraints and trade-offs, but don't overcomplicate your solution. And finally, be sure to test and debug and reason the correctness of your code. And this brings me to today's video sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a great way to learn computer science, math, and other topics interactively and makes you a better problem solver. Their hands-on approach and intuitive visualizations help me understand what was actually going on underneath the hood instead of just memorizing syntax. I've used Brilliant to supplement what I learned in class and even in industry. Brilliant has thousands of bite-sized lessons in Python, algorithms, data structures, and AI, and you can work through all of them at your own pace, which is perfect for busy students or industry professionals. There are new lessons added monthly. Whether you're prepping for your next interview, trying to level up as an engineer, or like I was, just trying to build up skills to become a better programmer and more logical coder, Brilliant makes learning feel doable and even fun, and its personalized practice and end-of-level reviews helped me really absorb the material. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free, visit brilliant.org slash Zhang, scan their QR code on the screen, or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks again to Brilliant for supporting the channel, and now let's talk about the next part of the Databricks interview process, the hiring manager round. In the hiring manager round, you'll spend around an hour with the manager or sometimes the director of the team that you're currently mapped to in the interview process. This conversation is entirely about your past work, your domain expertise, what kind of projects you've enjoyed, how you collaborate with others, and the kind of impact that you want to make. Expect questions like, tell me about a time you led a difficult project, how did you handle conflict with a teammate, or which part of your work are you most proud of? Also, you might be asked why you're interested in Databricks or the specific team, so make sure to have an answer prepared for that. The system Design round is a pretty standard question. My interviewer recommended grokking the low level design interview using OOT principles as a guide. When doing this interview, think about the classic illities, for example, security, extensibility, scalability, availability, and so on and so forth. Expect to talk about data flow, fault tolerance, storage strategies, and how to design systems that handle large scale traffic. When you're starting out in the interview, make sure to ask questions like who are the primary users? Are we optimizing for read heavy or write heavy workloads? What is the expected scale, you might want to do some back of the envelope calculations with the numbers of daily active users, PQPS or data volume. Are there any specific geographic regions or latency targets to consider? What kind of data are we storing? How large is the typical record? What are the main access patterns by user ID, timestamp or another key? Now let's talk about the behavior round. This was also a pretty standard round. The interviewer asked questions about tactical products from my past work, asking me things that would help him determine the scale, complexity and the tactical decisions and trade-offs that I made. In this round, the interviewer wants to see that you actually understood the systems that you built, not just follow directions. Use the STAR method, which stands for situation, task, action, and results. So do one or two sentences about the situation. What happened? Next, describe the task. What was your specific goal? Next, actions. What were the actions you took to overcome the obstacles and complete your objective? And finally, results. What are the tangible, quantifiable results of the situation? How did it help the company or the team? And now let's talk about the prep strategy you're gonna wanna follow to ace these interviews. Four to six weeks before the interviews, start with mastering the six core DSNA topics that dominate Databricks interviews. First, hash maps. Know things like collision resolution, understand load factors, and know when hash maps are the optimal choice versus trees or arrays. Next, Next, binary search. Go beyond just the basics. Practice on rotating arrays, finding boundaries, and search in 2D matrices. Next, arrays. Focus on sliding window, two-pointer, and prefix sum. And strings. Focus on string parsing, pattern matching, and tokenization. Practice problems involving string transformations and comparisons. Next, graphs. Master both BFS and DFS, but also understand things like Dijkstra's, topological sort, and cycle detection. And next, sorting. Know the complexities and use cases for different sorting algorithms. I'm going to say that I found the concurrent 
transparency and multi-threading interview problem very hard personally, since not many other companies ask specifically about this. So make sure for this interview, you understand concepts like race conditions, deadlocks, thread safety, scheduling, and how shared resources should be coordinated. Practically, this means brushing up on tools like locks, semaphores, queues, and thread safety data structures, and being able to explain why you chose them. Reviewing classic concurrency problems like the producer consumer queue or bounded buffer is a great warm up. Next, three to five weeks before the interviews, focus on systems and scale. Bring in the distributed system studying. If you have the means to do so, get grokking a low level design interview using OOD principles. Generally, make sure that you know the fundamentals of object oriented design, for example, encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, and polymorphism, and how to apply them to real design problems. I personally also really like using Hello Interviews free YouTube video walkthroughs on classic system design problems. Two weeks before, focus on mock interviews. This is critical. Practice with other engineers interviewing at companies like Databricks. You can use interview prep sites like Pramp or Interview.io or just borrow your friends. And finally, the week before, incorporate your behavioral practice. Prepare eight to 10 stories using the star format about experiences you've had throughout your career. Have stories ready for conflict resolution, failure, ambiguity, and tactical leadership. And to sum up, here's some key things I learned during the interview process at Databricks that apply to any tech interview at a big company. Refers recruiters are here to help you. They actually want you to succeed and they will provide you resources and tips to help you succeed. Second, Databricks really values engineers that can think about how to scale systems, not just how to solve a leak code DSNA hard. And third, strong communication matters just as much as strong coding. Being able to walk through your thought process clearly, explain trade-offs, and make your assumptions explicit is a huge signal of senior level maturity. This exact same prep strategy works for other big tech companies like Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. I know because I've interviewed and worked at all of them. If this helped you understand Databricks' interview process, feel free to give this video a like and hit that subscribe button. I'll be breaking down the interview process in more tech companies in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.